Hi friends, this is Jessica, the Sweetwater Stitcher, and I'm here with a special edition Organize With Me video. Today I am going to be talking about my organization for this upcoming year, 2023, kind, um, some of what I have done as far as planning and organizing, and I will also at the end talk about my plans for 12 by 12, which is a stitch along type of thing that is organized or was started by Kia from Kia B and Pam with Just Keep Stitching. And I know that this year Stephanie is participating and they have um, a couple different ways that they're working the 12 by 12. And I'll talk about that at the end. So if you're not interested in what I have chosen or hearing any more about it, then you can sign off. But at the beginning, I'm going to go through my method of how I went about um, organizing for 2023. So the first thing I did was I went through all of my patterns that I have and I have a shelf that is behind me and I don't know if you can see it. It's a large black metal shelf and I'll insert a picture right here of the shelf. And on the shelf, I have plastic bins or on the top, very top, I have um, patterns for quilting and books and magazines. And then on the second shelf down, I have the plastic um, scrapbooking bins that I'll talk about in a minute that have all of the months of the year on it and now it's a new addition. The next shelf down I have whips and let me look over there and then I have some other so whips that I'm not going to be I'm not planning let me phrase it that way I'm not planning to work on this year and then I have a, a box of whips that I would like to work on. And then the next shelf has patterns and kits. And then the bottom shelf has extra wood pieces and just kind of odds and ends that I just needed a place to store them. So I bought that metal rack at Target and I'll link it below. I also, somebody had commented in the Stitcher Stash group about they had bought one similar to mine on Amazon. And I also know there's another rack similar at Costco. And I'm assuming if Costco has it, then probably Sam's does. But Target, I was able to get it and they delivered it to my house um, because I wanted to put it together, but I was at home with my kids. So that was the most convenient for me. Um, and I wanted to get it right away so I could go ahead and get started organizing. So that's what's on the rack. So the first thing I did was I went through all of my patterns and I picked out ones that really spoke to me that I was, I really wanted to potentially stitch in this upcoming year. Obviously, if I bought the pattern, I like it. I'm not buying patterns I don't like, but I knew that in all the patterns I have, which other people I know have way more than I do, but of the patterns that I do have, there's no way I could stitch all of them in one year. So I just tried to think, is this something that I would like to try to stitch in 2023? And if the answer was yes, I took it out and I put it in a pile. And then from that pile, I divided them up by um, theme. And then along with Alicia from the Fanciful Flamingo, she is my co-creator of the Stitcher Stash 2023 group on Facebook, which is SYS 2023 if you're interested in joining. And like I said, it stands for Stitcher Stash. And we had come up with categories for each month. So we will have different things going on in the Facebook group having to do with the category. And then our Zoom meeting for the month will have something to do with that as well. So I wanted to break my months down into the categories. So um, from 
my large pile of patterns, I separated it out into the different categories. And then from there, I didn't know what to do. So I have these bins already and I'll show you what they are. I bought mine at um, Michael's and I know you can buy them at Hobby Lobby and I think at Joann's and I already had some of these, but I have them with my quilt kits. So they were already in use. So I needed to get some more, but this is the bin and um, I can link this below as well. I Hopefully it's in the um, description, but it is a 12 by 12 storage case and it's simply tidy. So if you just type in on the Michaels app, if you're ordering from Michaels, simply tidy um, plastic bin or, or storage case, 12 by 12, it'll come up. And what I did, because I knew I wanted to use them one bin for each month, I ordered 12 of them and I ordered them for drive up so that they would deliver them to my car and I didn't have to have 12 bins in my cart. Um, because as many of you know, I have three little kids and even if two of them are at school, I still have one of them with me. So trying to check out with 12 of these plastic bins would have been challenging. Um, so I bought them and I, you could use a coupon and they already were very inexpensive and then they brought them right to my car and I was able to take them home. So if going into stores or anything like that is hard for you, that's an option. If you order from Michael's is they'll bring it. I'm, mine does. I'm pretty sure most of them have a curbside option and I just ordered them right on the app and then they brought them to my car. So then from there, um, I, again, I, bought 12 of them because I wanted one for each month and I wanted to separate my projects that I had, my patterns I had selected into the months. So I did that and that was the first step. Then I went through all of my whips, which I had a lot. I didn't count them um, because the number doesn't really matter to me. I will probably eventually count them to try to challenge myself to get the number down but the number it, I'm not saying I want to have only this many whips or under this many or whatever that doesn't matter to me some people it does matter and that's fine too um but I didn't care so I didn't count them but um what was it oh okay so I then I went through all my whips and I did unkit some of them. I still have another section of whips that are kind of older that I had separated. They're actually behind me in these, um, in the baskets. And they're ones from when I first started. Um, so I need to go back through those and make sure that I really want to get back to those projects. And if I don't, I'm going to either unkit them or I will unkit them. I will either give them away if there is enough done on them and I just don't want to finish it, or I will see if there's a way to finish a portion and then take that and make an ornament or a needle book or repurpose it in some way. So after I go through those, then I'll figure that part out. But that was the next step was going through all of my whips and saying, is this a whip? One, I want to keep. And two, if I do want to keep it, is it something that I see myself wanting to work on in the coming year? And if I was, then I put that into a pile. And from that pile, I then separated them out to the months of the year. So I'm going to go through a couple of the bins with you guys tonight or today. And then um, as the like the next months come along, then I'll probably do like a follow up to the video and show what's coming up for the next months. But I didn't want to go through all 12 of them today because I might change my mind and I still might change my mind from what's in them. But this was a way to narrow down 
all of my stash. So I was only choosing from what was in the bin and I picked what went in the bin. So it wasn't like someone else picked what was in the bin and I don't have exactly four projects or anything like that. I just put in whatever from those categories I really thought I would want to work on in the coming year. Um, on the bins also, I added um, to each bin, I have a silhouette machine or a Cricut is the same thing. And I cut out the months of the year and I labeled them on the front. So all of them have on the front the months of the year and then I have them all in order. And that was helpful too when I was organizing it. I had them all laid out on the ground and then I was putting the patterns in based on the theme that we had come up with um, for that month. Now, going back to the themes, those are themes that we had thought of um, and I can't remember if Alicia already posted them or not, but if she didn't, we'll have a calendar or we'll be announcing them as we go along. Um, but you do not have to stitch what we came up with. You can stitch whatever you want. It was just a way to, um, we'll probably have some giveaways and different things like that that have to do with the theme that we picked, but that was just our way of organizing and, and trying to make the group fun. All right, so then from the bins, then I put the things in. And I'll go through the bins, like I said, in just a minute. The one other, um, I wrote notes, so that's what I'm looking at. Um, my other two things that I have is I also have a, this is just a, kind of what I had. This has been right here, and this has, um, I'm pretty sure all these are kitted up, or for the most part. Oh, well, like, this is just a pattern. But these are all other patterns that I am interested in using for six in six, which is another challenge um, that Alicia and Chris, the camping stitcher, they started, um... I think it was in November and we'll be doing that again um, throughout the year and that is where you choose six projects whether they are new starts or whips or you could even pick other things like do a finish or whatever but six projects to complete over a weekend and each project you sp um, are spending an hour on. So these are other projects that I knew I wanted to work on and they most of them are kitted up. Um, some of them fit in the categories of the months, but then some of them didn't, but I, I knew I wanted to start them. So I put them in, those, in this basket so I know that when six and six comes up, I can go to this bin if I wanna pick new starts and pick from that bin. I also have other kits in an, a whole nother area, but like I said, I was trying to narrow down my search so when a six and six comes up, which I believe in February, we're going to there's going to be a six and six, then I know I can go to this bin and I can pull if I wanna do six starts or, or whatever I wanna do. Um, so that was that bin. And I also have another basket that's still on the shelf. And then I have this, oops, <laughs> basket. And this has whips. I do have one, this is a new start, but this has whips that are, um, like kind of ongoing that don't really have a category. So for example, I have my red sampler in here because that's something I would wanna work on like every month. It's not just one specific month. I This is the one that I haven't started, the stocking, Shepherd's Bush stocking. I wanna be working on that. 
um, I'm going to do a few, not all, but I'm going to do a few of the barn, sweet barn from Fat Quarter Shop. So I put that in here. This is um, Lori Holt's, oh, what is it called? Autumn Love. And I want to work on that like a little bit each month. And I'm thinking about, I haven't decided exactly how this is going to play into it, but I have also thought about stitching um, like that on the 13th of the month or on the last day of the month as kind of like autumn Halloween. Um, I have my flags on the 4th, so I'm going to work on something from this bag on the 4th of the month. Um, so that's kind of like what this basket is. And then I have Redbird Sampler, which is a sal that's going on um, with Julie from, um, Julie Stubbs from, I cannot think of what her YouTube name is, but I will, Stitching with Julie, I think. I'll link her below and Lori Holt are hosting that Redbird Sampler. So those are all in here. So this basket is more, um, kind of sals and days of the week, but not every, like once a month type of um, things. And then the other basket that has whips in it are just whips that don't really fit in a category, but are something that I would like to get to. So when the month starts, the places I have to choose from are this the bin for the month, which goes along with the category, my basket that has like the different kind of monthly theme type of, um, or like the flags on the fourth, the sows, that kind of thing. And then I also have a bin with some, um, pat or not pat, uh, whips that I would like to get to. So if like, for instance, the first one has um, some snowmen, some sampler type of things. Um, but if I'm not really feeling anything that I picked in that bin, then I'll probably go to one of these other baskets and pick from there. Because I've already said, these are the ones that I really wanna work on. Because I personally have a hard time picking when I have a lot of choices but I don't necessarily work well when I it says, this is what you're gonna work on. So I wanna have some choices, but I don't wanna have too many choices. Um, okay, so I am going to go ahead and go through my January bin, my February bin, and my March bin. And another thing that I'm also going to be doing throughout the year is about every three months as I'm going to kind of reevaluate my plan. In March, especially when market comes, if I like how it's going, I'll continue. If I wanna switch something up, I might switch something up. So um, it's not like it's set in stone. And if after January, I don't like it, I don't have to do it. It's a hobby, but I like to plan and I want to set goals for myself because I'd like to get some of this stuff accomplished and on my walls. And this is my way of doing it. Everyone has their own way of planning or not planning. Some people don't plan at all and that's also okay. So it's all personal um, to how you work and how you are. All right. So for January, the theme is like winter and then also um, I my I'm adding to mine is a sampler. Um, there is something and I tried to look it up but I've heard a few people talking about it and they call it, it a blessing sampler and that's what Nicola from Hands Across the Sea had called it. And I know Carol Saltbox Stitcher, she stitches a sampler and January from beginning to end. And from what I have heard from Nicola's videos is the reasoning behind it is that they say if you start a sampler in the beginning of January and you stitch it all the way through as the, a blessing sampler, 
um, and it can be any sampler, it is supposed to bless your needle for the rest of the year. So I thought that was a cool idea. I liked it. Um, and so I'm going to pick one that I want to try to have completed by the end of the month. And I haven't decided which one yet, but I am going to pick one. Um, and that will be one of my goals. I also in that, um, in the January bin, so for wintery, I have Winter Garden, which is a stitch along with Stacy Stitches uh, Creative Studio. And she also has this um, pattern in her shop. And I am stitching that with silks that I color matched. Um, I also have in that bin my, um, oops, that's the pattern. <laughs> my Teresa Koget uh, Snowman from this month's Patreon. So I know some people uh, were liking this and this is uh, for tier two, three, and four. So I'm stitching this and I put this in there. This is a potential um, to the sampler and this is a small, and the sampler, it doesn't have to be big. This is from Little Robin Designs and it's called Jane MCD 1856. And I think this is so pretty, the colors. Um, so this is like a small sampler. So that's in my bin. I also am participating in the Maker and Mender Sal. And this is by Brenda Gervais. And this is in here. And the hashtag for this is hashtag Maker and Mender Sal, S-A-L. So if you're interested uh, in joining, this is starting on January 1st. So I have that in there. And then I think I have, um, oh, then I have a couple that are in my uh, 12 by 12 that will go into this bin. And then this is another one, and I think I have a cover sheet. Uh, let me see. This is actually a whip. Of course, I don't have it. But this is, I'll just show you what I have so far. This is stew, what's it called? Stew Snowman by Teresa Kogut. And it's the pattern that has, and this is a whip of mine. This, it has the alphabet and then it has the snowman and then the rest of the alphabet down here. And so this is in my bin because I'd really like to work on this. And then, like I said, I have a couple um, that are in my 12 by 12 that I'll show and those will go in here. And that's kind of, I'll talk about the 12 by 12 in a sec, but that's kind of how I picked what I put in 12 by 12 were things that I knew I wanted to work on in the first couple months of the year. And I wanted to get them a head start and then I'll put them back into the bins to continue working on. So then my next bin is February and in my 12 by 12, I have a couple um, projects that I wanna work on from there. I also have in this bin, I have Happy Hearts Sampler by Birds of a Feather. And this is out of print. You can find it on the secondary market. That is where I got mine originally, but I don't remember where I got it from. Um, but I've had this for a little while and I just haven't started it, but I thought it was appropriate for February. And I think it's really pretty. This is my favorite part down here at the bottom, the, um, the black and white checkerboard. So this is in my um, bin to start. And I also have, I don't think I started this one, but this is 2022 Collector's Heart by Heart and Hand. And I have all of the um, floss and the fabric for it. And I just think this is so pretty. So this is in there. And then, like I said, I have a couple other smalls 
and I have two other larger projects that I'd like to work on. So we'll see what I, what I work on, but these those are kind of like my choices. And then March, I don't, let me see what, if I can even figure out what we said it was because I don't even know what the category was we came up with, but this is what's in my March bin. <laughs> These were things that just kind of like reminded me of spring and that's why I put them in here because I figured spring is kind of the start or I'm sorry March is springy and so that's why I picked these projects so this is a whip this is songbird sampler by artful offerings so this is in my March bin then this and I have been dying to start these I don't even know which one I want to do first this is Spring Parade by Lila Studio or Lila. I don't know the right way to say it, but um, I love these. These are from Market last year, and I finally got a hold of them. Um, I love the strawberry one, and I love the artichoke. But I am for sure going to start these. And then I've been wanting to do this. I want to do, this is Strawberry Sampler by From the Heart. And I really want to do the needle book. And I have all of the called for floss. And I have fabric to work on the needle book. So I put that in there. And then this is one, I don't know if I'll start it or not, but I love it. And I first saw this, um, Nancy from the So and So's, she finished it and it's awesome. This is Stacy Nash, Miss Baxter's house. And I just bought the PDF on her Etsy shop, but it's so, I love the house. <laughs> That's what sold me. So this I put in there because it kind of reminded me of spring, summer. And then I started, which I, I might have changed my mind and took, yes, I have, I need to restart it, but I'm, I want to do, um, this one, which I forget what it's called, but this is from this book and this is the one I'm working on or want to work on. And I have all the floss in there already. This is from Blackbird. And this is a, I already started this. This is called excuse me, Alphabet Garden by Nikki's Creations. And I started this and I didn't get very far, but I love, sorry. So this is in there. And I don't garden, but I just think it's really pretty. And I am stitching it on this gingham fabric. Um, so I would like to get back to this. And this is, so this was one of my whips. I've been showing a lot of um, new starts. And then this is a whip that every time I pull it to look at it, I don't get back to it, but I don't know why, because I'm almost done. <laughs> but Summer, Sweet Summer Come Again by Blackbird. And I'm almost done. And I changed the colors. So I only, <laughs> I just have to stitch the strawberries and I'll be done. So I am going to get this finished. So these are the kind of projects that sometimes I will go back and I will look and I will be so close to finishing and why I didn't just finish it, I don't know. So this for sure will be getting done. And this is in a bag that I made with Lori Holt's strawberry block. And this is one of my favorite bags. So once I finish this project, then I can use the bag for something else. But that's all in my March bin. And like I said, at, in March, and I probably will try to like let it roll until March as I have like my plans. And then in March, I'll reevaluate. And one of the reasons I chose March to reevaluate was one, because it was a couple months into the year and I could really see if I liked how the plant, my plan was going. 
and also because of market, because I know in March, when market happens, there will be patterns that I will want to buy. And I know that um, Alicia and I are doing Stitch or Stash, which our premise or our kind of our guidelines, which you don't really, I mean, we're not coming to police you that you're following these guidelines, but it's really to encourage people and encourage each other to stitch patterns in from our stash using things we have. But one of our, um, I guess, kind of rules, but really you don't have to stick to the rule because <laughs> we're not going to come police you, is that one part of your project is from your stash. So if you pick out a pattern, but you don't have the call for floss and you don't have anything close or you just want to use the call for and you go buy the call for, that's still stitching your stash because you have the pattern. Or if you have fabric and floss or fabric or floss and then you buy the pattern, then so as long as one part of it is from your stash, we're kind of considering that stitch your, stitch your stash. Because realistically, we know you're not gonna not buy anything. Um, and you can put your own restraints on yourself or restrictions depending on what you think, but obviously we all need to be realistic for what, what we're capable of. Some people cannot spend anything the whole year. Some people want to buy stuff and there's nothing wrong with either way. Um, but we just, we're trying to come up with a fun way to encourage people to um, stitch what they have. So back to market. Market is in March and obviously new patterns will be coming out. There will be lots of things that people want to buy. Um, and so I will purchase things from market. I I'm going to try not to go crazy because I do want to work on things I have, but I know there will be things I want. I am going to try to um, limit myself in that point of, is it a designer that I absolutely love? And I have a list in my head of who those people are. And is it something that I have to have immediately? If it is, then I'll get it. If it's not, it's not going to go away, so I can always buy it later, and I'll probably have some type of a list going that has like market releases that I'd like to purchase, and then using that as an incentive. If I finish this piece, then I will buy a new chart as a reward to myself, because that's one of my personal goals for the year is I would like to finish some of my larger pieces. How I go about that, I haven't also quite figured that out. So I'm still trying to decide um, or figure out how I'm gonna to accomplish that goal, but uh, that's kind of what my goals are or my what I'd like to do for the year. I wanted to show my planner. Sorry if I'm shaking the table. I wanna show my planner one more time and then I'm gonna talk about 12 by 12. So again, my planner that I'm using for cross stitch is um, the, uh, the framework of it is Tool, T-U-L, and it is a disc bound system and it is sold, this specific one is sold at Office Depot. You also could use Happy Planner, that's also a disc bound system. I do not know if there are others you could, uh, for the disc bound, you can also use a three ring binder. Um, I was looking and I saw that the Erin Condren planners, she has ones that have, um, it's more like a binder. And so you could use that type of planner. It's just something where you can take pages out. I also originally had had my planner spiral bound but one thing that I was noticing is that new things were coming out from Katie the Naptime Stitcher, which is who I, um, like the inside of my planner is based from. And if I had it spiral bound, there was no way to add pages. So that's why I ended up taking the spiral off and I 
um, changed over to the disc bound. And so I really am liking this. But so this is the front. And then this is an addition that I added. And I, it's kind of the idea came from uh, Chantel from 141 Design Company. And since Katie has actually designed pages like this, so this is a, one of my spreads and I'm just, I started it now um, just to play around and then I did already go ahead and go through January, but I don't have anything written in here yet, um, but this is a vertical spread and I have inserted some pictures from this week and then I'll also write things on here. And this is kind of like a bullet journaling of what happened during the week. So I'll probably put some information about what the pictures are, and then I might write some other things, highlights or other things that happened. But this is more of like a bullet journaling type of um, calendar in the front. So that is from this past week. And then this is this week, which I just, I went ahead and put the dates, put some like kind of the decoration type of things. So then I can go back and fill in with the pictures, which I am printing from my sprocket, which I already had this. And you can order this on Amazon. There are other types of small printers that you can order as well. But this one um, is what I picked. It connect your phone connects to it and then it prints out the pictures. And that is what these pictures are, are from pictures from my phone and I printed them off the sprocket and then I just, the paper has a sticky on the back and you just peel it off and stick the picture right into your planner or wherever you're going to stick it. So that was that week. And then I have the following week. And like I said, I just went through and kind of decorated my pages. So all I have to do now is go in and write in and or sticker the stickers. This I um, this is the first week of January and I printed my, I'm starting the Big Hearted Tiny Town Sal. So I printed that picture and put it in. And I also am going to be the lucky owner of a featherweight soon. So I put in a, a featherweight. But this is, these are stickers from Lori Holt sticker pad. And then this is just washi tape that I picked up a really big pack from Hobby Lobby. And I was not a big scrapbooker. So I'm just playing with it and being creative. And then this is the next one. It's a little bit different. So I went ahead and did a few weeks. So all I'm going to have to do, and this is another one, I just did it in some other colors. But I just sat down and I did all of that yesterday. So it really doesn't take that long to kind of set the pages up. And like I said, not with the dates, only with the days of the week. These are pages, printables, that you can purchase from Katie, who is the Naptime Stitcher on Etsy, and I will link her shop below. And then this section, which is the calendar, is what I will use for my planning purposes. And I haven't filled any of this in yet. I still need to go and do this. But this is... It talks about January and it says to do new starts, finishes, goals, notes, and then this is um, project and then like a tracker so you can say when, what days of the week you worked on your project. And then it has a whole monthly spread. So the whole month. So I will go in here and I will probably write down on the 4th, flags on the 4th. On the 13th, 
I will write down something I'll probably work on autumn love and then I'll also on the 25th I want to be working on a Christmas project and I want to pick one project that I focus on until it's finished um, like the 13th I want to work on autumn love until it's finished and so on so I'll go ahead and write that in and then like I am going to the Annabella's retreat I'll write that in I'll write down my stitch along start date so this will be more for like the planning purposes and then the front part will be like for the bullet journaling portion. And then there's some just lined pages and then it goes to the next month, February. And again, it has all of the stuff on here. I will probably write down my new starts and finishes um, because this year I didn't have any record of that and what I did the other day is I went to Instagram and I just counted all the pictures I had posted and that was assuming everything I finished I posted a picture of so when I did count I had around 50 finishes for the year so I feel like that's pretty good um but again, that was only the pictures I posted, so I'm not really 100% sure. And I would like to try to keep a record of what did I finish and what um, am I still working on, just so I kind of can have a better record for myself, not for anybody else, but just so that I know kind of what's going on. Um, all right, and then in the next section is the cross, I printed off the cross stitch planner pages, which this is basically the same oops, type of planning sheet that's in the cross stitch journal, which you can buy a pre-made journal um, from Fat Quarter Shop, or this is similar information that can go in this book. I liked it this way because everything is in this one book. I won't have a planner and then a cross stitch journal and then this and that and everything can be in the one book and I just have to look for this book. So that's in here and I haven't filled that out. And my plan for that is just to go from now going forward. I'm probably not gonna go backwards unless I pull a whip out that I was working on and then I'll fill this out if I know what the fabric is, but some of them, if I have an older whip and I didn't write down, I won't necessarily know all the information, but I'll try to fill it in. But I'm not gonna go searching through all my whips to fill this paper out for all of those. However, at some point, which this is not really a priority right now, I do wanna go through and track my whips. So this is a whip tracker and I will start with what I am kind of pulling out. I'll start writing it down and then I'll go back through my other baskets of whips that I am not planning on touching this year and fill this out just so I have a record of it for myself. And this is a newer page that she had. And again, I have to go through and start filling some of this stuff out. Um, but this is a stitch along tracker and this is the one that I found would be most useful. She does have another one for a different type of stitch along and I'll say, tell you what that is in a minute. But this is what I'll fill out for the Big Hearted Sow, which is a sow, I thought I, I think I have it. Um, Big Hearted Tiny Town by Heart and Hand. Myself and Mrs. Jones Stitches Holly are starting it on January 6th. Anyone is welcome to join and the hashtag is Big Hearted Sal. And so I'll fill this in for that. Um, Maker and Mender, I'll fill this out for that Sal. Um, I will probably fill one out for Redbird Sampler because I'm still working on that. But that's for this. And it's kind of like the start along page, the ones that are just ongoing, start it, all of them are really a start along. But the other um, printable that she has is one where you would have the stitch along is divided into different sections 
or it's a mystery stitch along. And so it has like information up here and then down here it has dates for the releases. So Fat Quarter Shop, a lot of times they will do stitch alongs where it's a mystery. So then you would write down here when each section is being released. Or um, for instance, the Cornhusker State Stitchers, they were hosting a stitch along for Christmas rules and it wasn't the pieces were being released because you have the whole pattern, but there were certain day, like certain weeks that they had kind of planned it out for you to work on the different sections. So you could write that down in that section so that you had a record of when you were supposed to be working on the different sections. Obviously we all know a stitch along is work at your own pace. If you wanna follow along with the dates, great, if not, then you can kind of do your own thing. But if you want to keep track of it, that was a way to keep track of it. And then in my last section, I have the cross stitch pattern inventory. And sometime when I don't want to stitch and I just want to kind of do some organizing, I will start working on this just to try to figure out what patterns I have. And I know everybody does it. And again, there's nothing wrong with it. But uh, like buying patterns twice or sometimes I know I have a pattern but I just don't know where it is. So I would like to get them a little bit better organized um, and then have a record of the patterns that I do have so that I know I do have the pattern or maybe you think you have it and you really don't. So I, I do want to fill that in but that's kind of a when I want to do something with cross stitch, but not necessarily stitch or if I'm tired or whatever. So I will get to that, um, get to that part eventually. Um, I also wanted to let you know, I did end up buying these. These are the planner pins from Lori Holt and I was using them to make like my notes and stuff. And I really, um, like these, I bought these off of Fat Quarter Shop. So if you're looking for a pin, this or I have these also, um, the tool pens. I'm always losing pens so I can never have enough or my kids are taking the pens. So I'm going to try to keep these in a safe spot so no one takes them, but there's no promises <laughs> with that. So that is my organization. And then I am going to talk about my 12 by 12 which is a stitch along hashtag that Pam from Just Keep Stitching and Kia from Kia B started last year on New Year's Eve. And this year, Steph is also going to be participating along with a lot of other people I've seen are also um, kidding 12 projects up and getting ready for their 12 by 12. And the hashtag is hashtag 12 by 12 also, Kia has a video uh, just going through all the details of what it is and a lot more information um, about it. But the premise is, is you either kit up 12 new starts or choose 12 whips, which is what Pam is going to be doing this year. And then you start and or work on one of them each hour. So I know Steph is going to be working on 12 whips or I'm sorry six whips and six new starts Kia is 12 new starts and Pam is 12 whips um I'm going to be doing 12 starts and many other people are kind of doing a mixture of things so right now they're asking for people to say if they are team start or team new start I can't remember which one it is or team whip. So I am team new start. Um, so my first project, and this is going to be at 12 noon, I will work on this, um, is this is the day. I had previously started this and I also have a stitch along going with this, ongoing. Um, and it's hashtag Sweetwater, this is the day Sal. And this is the pattern from Market last year from Plum Street. And I started this last year on a 32 count and I don't, it's barn gray and I feel like it's witch help because it is really stiff 
And since then, I still do stitch on 32 count, but I've moved to more of a softer linen and not too soft, not too hot. So it's a little bit hard and I was trying to stitch on it the other day to see if I still liked it. And I really am not liking the fabric. So I did go back and forth as to if I wanted to restart it or not. And I have decided to restart it. So I am going to figure out, and I'll show you where I am on this other fabric. I am going to figure out how to salvage part of this. I'm thinking maybe figuring out how to salvage the flower pot. I'm not sure, but this is where I was. And I just like, it's just the fabric and I'm not in love with it. And I have gone back and forth on if I wanted to restart it or not. And I just decided if I don't love the fabric, I'm not gonna wanna work on it. And I love this pattern and I really wanna work on it. So I don't want to the fabric to be a hindrance to that. So I'm going to restart it and I'm going to use um, the called for colors and I am going to stitch it on Thornfield. Um, let me make sure I'm telling you the right thing. Yes, it's 36 count Thornfield by Needle and Flax. And I have, I've, if you look up the hashtag, hashtag this is the day, or this is the day Sal, I can't remember. Somebody finished it on this fabric and it's really pretty. So this is what I'm going to restart it on. And I'm excited about it. So I feel like it, even though I was a, kind of far along, I just, like I said, if I didn't like what the fabric was, I wasn't going to be motivated to stitch it. And this is in a bag. Some of these I have in bags and some of them I haven't put in bags yet. But this one is from Joyful Stitching. And since it's a pink house, I bought a pink house bag. And I don't know if she still has these in her shop or not, but uh, Joyful Stitching Store.etsy.com is her shop. And this is her, um, and her bags are great. So that's my first whip or first new start. My second one is, this is one I've had for a while and I've never started it. And this was an exclusive through traditional stitches. So I won't talk a lot about it because you can't get it. And, but if you have it, you could stitch it. Oh, this is Ann Morrison from Hands Across the Sea. And like I said, I've had it for a while, but I just haven't um, done it. And I'm using all the called for colors. And I wanted to show something else I have with this. I made, because it's, um, it's stitched, <coughs> excuse me, in the uh, Verisois silk. And so I made one of these floss books that the um, tutorial is on needle and, um, needle and, no, linen and scraps and um, how to make it. And they make it with two rings but I this was like the first one I made and I didn't or no I don't know why I put only one but I did <laughs> I don't know. I'm telling you the wrong this one I made specifically for this but I also so I put a little tag on the front saying what it was and then I hole punched my library card and put it on here of what fabric I was using and um, all that. So I have to put the floss in here still, but this is how my um, floss is gonna be. So both of these are ones also I will pull back out and work in February. I might keep working on them in January if I kind of get on a roll, but my goal is for these ones to be kind of February um, since they are Valentine's Eve. And I have it in a everyone's favorite bag, a Ziploc. Um, okay, 
Next one is, and I don't know, of course I didn't put them back in order, is My Home by Blackbird Designs. And it's from this book, which is the Maria Selby Humphrey book. And it's actually this pattern right here. So I bought the book for that pattern and that's the one I'm going to do. And I'm using all the called for colors and I'm stitching it on Stars Hollow Blend by R&R. &R. And this is the fabric. And then this is the, let me see if I can hold them up. The called for colors. So, and I'll have pictures. I'll take pictures of this stuff before I start them at the different hours. So I have a record for myself and then um, you guys can see too. All right. The next one is Darling Buds of May and it's from this book which is Shall I Compare Thee to a Summer's Day? And this is another Blackbird book. And it's this one up here. And I wanted to, that's why I bought this book was for this um, pattern. So, and I'm stitching this on White Clay by Fox and Rabbit with the called for colors. And this is the, let's see if I can hold it all together. Oh goodness. Here's the fabric. Here's the floss. Very pretty. And here's the pattern. So I'm excited for that one. And also I kind of was trying to, when I was coming up with these, I wanted to come up with a few that were seasonal and then like this one well the couple blackbirds i feel like kind of can stay out all the time and i don't like on some of the months that don't really have a season i feel like i have no decorations so i wanted to um to get some stuff out there for those times all right the next one i am doing and this is the four o'clock start this is from the Ooh La La book, and it is Her Fair Works sewing box, and it's this one right here, which this book has a ton of projects that are great. And I am stitching it on 32 Count Hawthorne by Needle and Flax with all of the called for colors. And the fabrics are not the called for fabrics, but the floss are the called for floss. So I just picked fabrics that I had in my stash and then I am um, pulled the floss I had and then I bought the other um, floss that I didn't have. Then next I am going to be doing Cupid's Cup which comes from Love Notes by Brenda Gervais. And it's this one right here. If you can see it, it's the cup. And I actually have already done the Be Mine, the XOXO and the hearts. So I will have done all of them except for the one that says love. So this is the one I'm doing. And I'm doing it on 32 count vintage country mocha with all the called for colors. So this will go into my um, bowl with the other uh, pillows that I already have done. And then my next one is Holiday Hoopla Valentine's Day. And this one I will probably do in a hoop, but put in the dough bowl as well. And this is on 32 count vintage country mocha with the called for colors. And it's just, both of these are actually all DMC. So, or if it wasn't all DM, I think it is, let me just check. I'm pretty sure it's all DMC. Uh, yes, it's all DMC. So I just found 
in my stash what I had, and then I went to the store and bought the rest of it. Um, okay, the next is Mr. Marshmallow by Brenda Gervais. And this is a combination of DMC and um, Overdyed. And I had bought this a couple months ago. And I bought, so it calls for 36 count Kermit, but I bought this, which is 32 count green apple. And I think it looks close enough. It's even a little bit more muted, but I am using all the called for colors. So this one I will continue working on in January as kind of like a wintry um, stitch. So this is the seven o'clock. And then eight o'clock, and this is out of print, but I found this on a um, D stash website, and I wanted to start this, but I always go to something else. But this is called Blue Dog Sampler by Bright Needle, and I will probably continue oops, working on this in January just because of the colors. It's really pretty. And this is DMC, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, all DMC, and I bought called for colors, and the linen is, I don't remember what I picked. And I didn't write, let me check, because I just cut this too. <laughs> I didn't write it down. Okay, I think it's actually um, 36 count, like, flannel flower or whatever the one is by fox and rabbit i think but i might be wrong but it's similar to the picture so that is at eight o'clock and then at nine o'clock i have burr it's cold outside by brenda gervais and this let's see This is on 36 count popover by Lake or er, Legacy Fiber Arts. Sorry, this is the pattern. And it's all the called for colors. And this is my linen, which I'm kind of thinking that that might be popover too, which is um, so it might be the same thing. But um, all called for colors, and I'll continue to work on this in January as a small. And then I have, and this one I haven't decided on the fabric. I have the colors. This is Annie B's Little Pink Houses. And I have loved this for a very long time. And I, again, have not stitched it. So I wanted to get it started. I cannot decide the fabric. I don't think I want to stitch it on. This is, what does it say? Vintage Tundra by Lakeside. I don't think I want to do it on blue, but I cannot decide what to do it on. So in the comments, if you have an idea of what I should stitch this on, let me know because I haven't decided. I did pull the colors, so I have that, but I don't know what color linen. And then my 11 o'clock, if it shows up, I am going to work on or start This Happy Morning by Plum Street Samplers, which is the new pattern with the big red house or barn, whatever you want to call it. And I have in here some 32 count charcoal, which is what I want to stitch it on. So if that shows up before uh, the 31st, I will stitch that. And also if I can get my hands on this, which is... Um, the Yeti Sampler by Sambray Stitches. This is going to also get started. I don't know if I will be able to get this before the 31st. And I don't know if my, um, whatever that, uh, this, hap this happy morning will come by the 31st. If they don't, then I will probably look in my um, basket of other projects that I've wanted to start and pull two others, or I might pull two whips. I probably will pull two new starts just to like get those started. Um, 
And then that will be it for 12 by 12. And then I'll just keep working on some of the, um, the ones I said for January. I'll move those into my January box. The more Valentine's ones, I'll move those to my February box. And then one thing I will do at the end of the month is if I'm not finished or whatever I'm, I worked on but I'm not finished with, I will either decide to keep it in the box and like kind of roll it over to where I probably won't work on it again that year or I'll put it into the basket of whips that I have on my um, tower of projects that I would like to um, like keep working on during the year. So then I can either continue it to the next month or I can go back and pick it up later in the year and finish it up. So at the end of the month, then I'll kind of decide. And I will probably talk about that on my floss tube. It's the end of the month. This is what I am deciding to do. Um, so I am really excited about 12 by 12. I'm really excited about the new year and what it has to bring. And I also wanted to offer um, a giveaway during this video. And hold on one second and let me go get it. <clears throat> okay, I'm back. So today is December 22nd. So I will let this video, or I will let this giveaway run for one week. So on Thursday, the 29th, I will announce the giveaway winner. And the giveaway for this video is for somebody to win Winter Rose Manor. So in your comments, if you can use the word rose, and the word rose is what I will search for if you are interested in winning Winter Rose Manor by Brenda Gervais. And this was donated by um, someone who had sent me a exchange and I already have this pattern. And so she said to uh, share it with a friend and I figured this would be a great place to share it because we're trying to stitch our stash and this is a very um, desirable pattern. So I thought this would be a fun one to give away. So again, if you're interested um, for the giveaway, use the word rose in your comment. Be You need to be over 18 because I do need to ask for your address. You need to be a U.S. resident. Um, actually, let's just for this giveaway, we'll do 18 like the video, subscribe, and use the comment, and I will ship it wherever. Um, so this giveaway for this time, I will ship wherever. So you can live wherever and I will get this to you if you are the winner. So again, use the comment rose or the word rose and all of the other things. Don't say giveaway. Um, and you can also let me know, well, one, I am interested. <laughs> What fabric to use for this? Um, also, are you stitching your stash? Are you doing something else? Kind of what are your plans for the new year? Um, and I will try to compile a list of some people's plans and then I can share um, some of that. I won't share names, but some ideas along the way as the floss tubes uh, progress throughout the year. So thank you guys for watching. I know this is a long video. Um, but I hope that it was helpful. I will try to put links for some of the different things I talked about um, below. I will make a list of my 12 by 12 also below as long as there's enough room. 
Um, so if you're interested in what the patterns I picked, I don't know if I will have enough room to put links to all of them, but I'll at least list them. Um, I'll link a video, link Kia's video, um, along with some of my other things that I have used uh, throughout the video. So again, thank you guys for visiting with me. Thank you for watching and happy stitching and Merry Christmas. Bye.